Good morning. Praise God. We want to welcome you to the Manchester Church of God this morning. It is wonderful to be here. It's wonderful to see each of you. And we're just thankful for your commitment to God and for your commitment to this local church. So we just want to thank you for being here. If you are a guest with us this morning, uh, thank you for being here. Please continue to join with us. Perhaps you join with us online. Uh, continue to do that, but we would... Uh, we would really love to have, have you come and be with us and, and join in with our service here. So we're just grateful for you this morning. We do have a special guest, Dr. Milton Carter. Let's give him a, a hand clap of praise. He's with us this morning, a great man of God, a, a great man of the word, and we just look forward to having you with us and uh, hearing what God has to say through you. This morning we do want to open with prayer. We want to allow you to worship through your giving, so if you would, if you're able, stand with us. We just want to lay all things aside this morning and just focus upon God the Father and just thank Him for who He is this morning. So if you, if you would, just bow your heads out of reverence to Him and let's just praise Him this morning. Gracious Heavenly Father. God, we praise you this morning. We thank you, Father, for another glorious day that you have blessed us with. Father, with the opportunity just to gather in your house to worship and to serve you. For, Father, there is none other like you. Father, you are a, a righteous God. You're perfect in every way. Father, all that exists does so at your command. All good things, they come from you. And we praise you this morning. We thank you for the promise of eternal life through the blood of of Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you for the relationship that you have given us through him. So this morning, Father, we, we just want to be, have a right relationship with you, O oh God, just to, just to be where you need us to be. So Father, we ask that you would forgive us of our shortcomings. Father, forgive us of our iniquities. Father, forgive us for the times that we fall short of that which you would have us to do. Father, we just ask that you would join with us this morning. Father, we are grateful for those saints gathered. Father, we just lay the needs of your people at your feet this morning. Father, asking that you would do for us that which only you can do. Father, we ask for healing this morning. Father, your word tells us that we have not because we don't ask for it. Father, we're asking for that this morning. And we are believing in your word. Father, we just ask that you would touch your people. Father, there is no disease that is greater than you. Father, you are above all cancers. Father, you are above all tumors. Father, all sickness. Father, we just believe in your healing this morning. We just ask that you would bring forth healing, that you would bless your people. Father, you know the needs that we have. Father, we just ask that you would deliver those needs this morning. Holy Spirit, we welcome you this morning. We ask that you would fill this place, that you would touch your people, that you would live within us, that you would give us direction, that you would give us discernment, that you would speak to us, that you would speak through us. Oh, we just praise you this morning. Father, we just ask that you would touch the word, that you would touch the message this morning, that you would allow it to fall upon receptive hearts. Father, that you would break chains this morning, the things that hold us back. May you be glorified in this place. May you be glorified. Father, this morning we are thankful for your provisions in this life. We just ask that you would receive our tithes and our offering, that you would multiply them, that you would cause them to be used for the glory of your kingdom. Father, once again, just speak to our hearts this morning. May you be blessed. May you be glorified. Father, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
morning, me and our young adult class, we were talking about how science and how the world explains things changes. I mean, at one point, Pluto was a planet. Now Pluto's not a planet. Things, they always change. The way we believe, at one point, the world believed that the earth was flat. Now it's not. But you know that there's one thing that has never changed from the beginning of time and until the end of time. That's God and his word. It's the same. It's the same that it was when Jesus walked the earth, and it's the same now that we are in it. We can count on God.
No other foundation will stand like you. Thank you. 
from the start, shining through the dark, the lion and the lamb. You are holy, holy. You are holy.
we go. Amen. Amen. Sorry about that, Jerry. I got two mics on. I didn't think about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we take just a moment this morning and just lift our hands and our hearts to our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ? Jesus, we come this morning and we worship you. We declare who you are. We declare that you're the Savior. We declare that you came to this earth through the Virgin Mary. We declare that you died on the cross for our sins. And I declare that at this very moment, you sit at the right hand of the Father interceding for me. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you. Jesus, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, for who you are. I thank you, Jesus, for what you do. You're my help. You're my hope. You're my peace. You're my joy. Oh, God, we worship you. We praise your name. Today, I need you. I need you. I need you. Oh, God, we worship your name. We worship your name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated this morning. We have a special guest with us this morning, Dr. Milton Carter. Uh, some of you, if you've been to Leadership Retreat, you would know Dr. Carter. He spoke up there a few times for us. Um, <clears throat> Dr. Carter has done a lot of different things. He pastored a church in Virginia, kind of outside of Washington, D.C., for a few years. Um, was a professor at the seminary for a season there, and um, just a lot of different things. He's been a, um, the last few years, you've been a professor, I forget what school that is, Grand Canyon University, um, just done a lot of things. This man's got a, just a mountain of information that he has experienced, not, di not just the stuff that he's studied, but anyways, Dr. Carter is going to come this evening. We have a leadership meeting this evening with Dr. Carter at 5, and um, anybody can come to that, but it's we really are saying that our leaders need to be there. Um, if you just do anything at all, if you're picking up paper on the sidewalk, guess what? You just got invited. Uh, so uh, anyways, uh, if you are just sitting at home this evening and you're like, man, um, I'm looking for something to do. You know what? Just run by this evening. Five o'clock, we'll be here. We're going to have a good time. So, But Dr. Carter is going to come at this time. Dr. Carter, we thank you, everybody. If you would just give him a good hand this morning. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Greetings, church family. Could we just give Jesus a great ovation of praise this morning? Amen. <laughs> praise God. I feel so blessed to be with you today. I sense the presence of the Lord in this place. As we were singing that second or third song, I just really connected on those words. Jesus, would you just show how great you are right here this morning? Praise God. One of the verses of the New Testament that has really strengthened my faith is from 1 John chapter 4, where John said, Greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. And just a few moments ago, the Holy Spirit reminded me that greater is he who is in this place this morning. Would you dare to believe that with me? Greater is God who is in this house of worship this morning than he that is in the world. I want to say that again. I feel the Lord just releasing that over us today. Greater is he that is in this place than he that is in the world. Greater is he. Amen. Praise God. Greater is he than any problem, any situation that's tagging along with you this morning. What an honor. What a blessing to be back at Manchester Church of God. You have become such a dear family to me. My wife and I pray for churches either on Saturday or Sunday morning. I'm praying for churches, and your church name is on there. I, I feel knitted together with the mission of this church. It's just been so rewarding to spend time in some of the leadership retreats with your leadership team. I'm so grateful 
that partnering with you and where you're at. You're on a good journey. Praise God. You are on a good journey. Hallelujah. As a congregation. My wife, Violet, who's with me this morning, I'm so glad she could be with me today. We've had the wonderful blessing in the last 25, 30 years to visit a lot of churches, somewhere around 150 or 200 churches. And that, some of that is because we were serving in positions that afforded us that opportunity. Some of the churches that we visited were growing and thriving. Some of those congregations were on a plateau, and some of them had seen their best days, and they were in a state of decline. We need to pray for the church in America. Would you do that? Lord, touch every church, every Bible-believing, Spirit-filled church in America. There are numbers out there that cause us to pray. Some statistics, and I believe they're very accurate, say that about 80% of the churches in America in this 21st century are either plateaued, that means they're just kind of where they're at, been there for a while, or they're on a, in a state of decline. But you're doing something about that. This congregation has dared to say, in the name of the Lord, we're going to create a new chapter, praise God, and we're going to move off the plateau, and we're going to gain greater heights for the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you just praise God for what He's doing in your congregation today? Amen. Amen. I feel the Lord in this place. So grateful to be with my good friends, Pastor Dave and Pastor Sherry Petty, two great servants of the Lord. You're so blessed to have this wonderful pastoral couple leading your congregation. I know you love them. He has become a wonderful colleague in the ministry. A number of years ago, we began to serve in a ministry to pastors in Tennessee, and that's how we connected. And just so grateful for Pastor Dave and Pastor Sherry and their wonderful ministry. Would you turn with me to the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 8? Really feel led of the Lord to go into this miracle of Jesus for a few moments of time. Luke's Gospel, chapter number 8. I'm going to begin reading at verse number 26. This is one of the great miracles of Jesus where he delivered a man who was demon-possessed. Life could not have been worse for this man. And Jesus came along and gave him a wonderful life. Aren't you glad with me this morning that Jesus is the one who gives us not just a better life, but the best life we could possibly have. Beginning in verse number 26, the Bible says, Then they sailed to the country of the Gadarenes, which is opposite Galilee. And when he stepped out onto the land, there met him a man, a certain man from the city who had demons, who had demons for a long time. Notice that. This man had been demon-possessed, the Bible says, for a long time. And he wore no clothes, nor did he live in a house, but in the tombs. That meant that he literally lived in a cemetery. Verse 28, when he saw Jesus, he cried out. This was actually demonic voices speaking out of him. He cried out and fell down before him with a loud voice, said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. Praise God for this next part of this passage. For it had often seized him and had kept him, they had kept him under guard and bound him with chains and shackles. And he broke the bonds and was driven by the demon into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, saying, What is your name? And he said, Legion, because many demons had entered him. And they begged him that he would not command them to go out into the abyss or the pit. Now a herd of many swine was feeding there on the mountain. So they begged him that he would permit them to enter them. The latter part of verse 32. And he permitted them. Then the demons went out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd ran violently down the steep place 
into the lake and they drown. Praise God. Could I just shout a little bit over demons that drowned and they were just forever gone out of this man's life? Hallelujah. That's the power of Jesus. We need his power today. Praise God. And then the Bible says in verse 34, Then those who fed them saw what had happened. They fled and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what had happened and came to Jesus. They came to Jesus and they found the man. The man who had been demon-possessed, they found the man from whom the demons had departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus. And the Scripture says, clothed, clothed. And in his right mind, praise God. And then they were afraid. They also, who had seen it, told them by what means he had been demon-possessed and was healed. And then the whole multitude of the surrounding regions of the Gadarenes asked him to depart from them because they were seized with fear. And he got into the boat and returned. And now the man with whom... The demons had departed, begged him that he might be with them. But Jesus sent him away saying, Return to your own house and tell what great things God has done for you. And he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city what great things Jesus, Jesus had done for him. I want to use... From this passage today, verse 27, as the focal point where the Bible says he had been demon-possessed for a long time. I've been really blessed in my life to know many great storytellers. I don't really consider myself one, but I, I've had uncles and relatives and friends who can just really hold my attention by their giftedness of telling a story. I worked for a man as a teenager by the name of Thomas Todd, who had been in the Navy in World War II. He was in a lot of battles in the Pacific Theater of World War II. And sometimes after I would finish cutting his grass or cleaning his patio, I would get Mr. Todd to come and sit in his front yard in that old swing that he had. And I would say, tell me again what it was like to be on that destroyer. And Thomas Todd would begin to tell me about a battle. He called that destroyer the old tub. And he would say, we could, we could smell the diesel and when those guns, when those cannons would shoot. It was like the tub would just rock back and forth. I thought I was going to get seasick just right there in his front yard because he just held me in such rapt attention by telling me that story. My wife's older sister, Marion, was very poetic in some of her storytelling, and she could talk about going to the ocean and sitting on the beach and describing the sunrise and, and, it was, and the waves, and it was almost like I could hear the waves coming up on the shore, and I could see the beautiful sunset that she was talking about. I really enjoyed being around who are master, master storytellers. Don't tell anybody, but I think your pastor has that gift too every now and then. Uh, he, he can weave a great story. Praise God. I think four of the greatest storytellers I've ever heard, I consider them master storytellers, were four men by the name of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They were gifted of the Holy Spirit to tell the greatest story of all, the story of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Hallelujah. And if you read the Gospels, you'll notice that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were called upon by the Holy Spirit to give us details, important details about the life of Jesus Christ. I want to tell you that the Gospel is just not another gener uh, generic story. It's not just another drama, but this is the inspired Word of God. The Gospel is an inspired story. Wrap your life around the Gospel of Jesus Christ. It'll change your life. It'll bring you through every turmoil and every trial. It will take you all the way to the streets of heaven. Hallelujah. I've learned to appreciate the master 
storytelling of the Gospels. For example, in John chapter 21, John is telling the story of that great miracle of Jesus encountering the disciples after the resurrection. And you know the story. They had gone back to the Sea of Galilee and they, they were, it was one of those moments where uh, they were in their disappointment. And I love how John talks about that whole situation taking place. And at the end of that chapter, he says, that day those fishermen caught 153 fish. They did what Jesus said. They cast their nets on the right side of the boat. Now, growing up in southwest Virginia, I would have been glad if John had said they had caught a whole bunch of fish. I would have understood that. But I'm really glad that John was inspired by the Spirit to say they caught 153 fish because there have been times in my life when I needed God to do something very, very specific. I needed God to do something right down to making it perfect. And he's a God who does that. Hallelujah. Praise God. In John chapter 5, John gives us another detail as he tells the story of a man who sat by the pool of Bethesda. The Bible says he had been there for 38 long years. He was paralyzed, and he sat on the patio of that pool waiting for an angel to come down and touch that water and, and make it a, a virtuous pool of healing. And the Bible says that one day Jesus came encountered this man. Now, I would have been really glad if John had said this man had been there just for a number of years, but I'm so thankful that this man who was healed by Jesus that day that John said he was there for 38 years because that lets me know that no longer how no long it doesn't matter how long you've been through something it doesn't matter how long you've been held in any kind of problem it does not matter Jesus can do something about it if you've been in it a day or a year or for 38 long years Oh, praise God. Would you just lift up a hand and give him glory this morning? I'm telling you this morning, no matter how long you've been dealing with something, Jesus can still deliver and set us free from it. Praise God. In Matthew chapter 14, Matthew was touched by the Holy Spirit to give us the details of Jesus feeding 5,000 people. What a great, great miracle. But I'm so glad the Holy Spirit did not leave out the details with five pieces of bread. We call them five Five loaves and two fish. It was literally five pieces of bread and two fish. Jesus fed a multitude of at least 5,000 people. Thank God he is all powerful in every situation. And when man looks at something and says it can never be done, like the disciples said, where are we going to get the food? Jesus knew that the source was from the heavenly Father. And the Bible says that with those five pieces, pieces of bread. Jesus broke the bread and the fish, and everyone ate, and there were 12 basketfuls that remain. Could I just remind all of us today that God can go a above and beyond anything we can imagine or think, whatever needs to be done, God can exceed that in our lives today. Praise God. Lastly, in Luke's gospel, here even in chapter 8, he tells the story of a, of a ruler of the Jewish faith, a man by the name of Jairus. And the Bible says that Jairus' daughter was very, very ill at the point of death. And the Bible says that she was 12 years old. Now, in our thinking, we would have probably been just fine if the Bible had said Jairus' young daughter was sick. But the Bible very specifically, specifically says she was 12 years old. That lets me know that God reaches down to the very youngest of our, of our families and he can touch our children. That detail is very important as a parent. I have drawn strength from that in praying over my children and other children. Praise God. 
In Luke chapter 8, we're looking at another great miracle of Jesus filled with details. Would you notice the details that the Holy Spirit gives us in this miracle? Detail number one, the Bible says this man was demon-possessed, and no one liked him. He lived a life as a menace. He was really a terrorist. He went around the town terrorizing people and causing problems, and they even put him in chains, and he would break out of the bonds, the Bible says. He was He was such a menace to his own people. He was demon-owned. He was demon-controlled. He was demon-supervised, demon-manipulated. He lived in the dark domain, the Bible says, detail number two, of a cemetery. He lived a dreadful, dreadful life. The detail I want you to pick up on here is that life could not have been worse for this demon-possessed man. But, oh, I'm glad I'm in the house of God today. I'm glad I'm singing about a Father who loves us and a Savior who's God today. I'm glad to know this morning that the God that we worship, Jesus, our Savior, our Lord, the Holy Spirit, the God of the Spirit who's with us today can come to us in our worst moments and make life better for us. Hallelujah. And the Bible says the third detail here is that that man had been demon-possessed for a long time. I'm grateful that that little detail was included by the Holy Spirit. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm really not trying to be facetious this morning. I'm not trying to mock anything. But I want to tell you sometimes a long time can be a long time and even cause us to give up hope. A lady a few months ago was driving on a treacherous, mountainous road in Northern California and lost control of the car. The car rolled down and turned upside down, and for three days, this lady was pinned in the wreckage. She was beginning to think that her life was over, and she said these words. It was such a long time. It was three days but it was such a long time for her. Thankfully, a hiker came along, and she was rescued. I remember a number of years ago, we, I was called by a pastor friend in another city, and he said, there's a lady in our church that's coming to the, to the hospital in Richmond, Virginia, where we were pastoring a large medical center, and she's got to have a transplant, and she's going to be there probably for a month, the most two months. So he said, I'm going to be with her during the surgery, but after that, would you visit her some? And Violet and I said, we would be glad to do that. We began to visit this dear lady, and she not only spent a week, a month, but she ended up staying in that hospital for eight, eight long months. Something went wrong with the surgery. She was not able to recover. She went into a coma, and for eight long months, she was comatose in that hospital. And I remember once a week, sometimes twice a week, I would go and sit with her husband, and we would pray together. And he kept saying to me, for eight long months, he kept saying to me, Pastor, a little bit of faith will take you a long way. I would go the next week, and after we would pray together, he would... He would say, Pastor, a little bit of faith will take you a long way. He was believing God that he was going to bring his wife out of that comatose state. And I want to tell you that after eight months, her eyes opened up and she began to speak. She was alert. I'm telling you this morning, her husband was right. A little bit of faith will take you a long way. He refused to give up in a long-term situation. Sometimes we give up after weeks and months and we say our present situation is, is what it is. But I want to declare to you on this Sunday morning that your present situation doesn't have to be your permanent condition. Hallelujah. God changes things. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Lord, just release your touch upon us today. There are some people, I believe, right here this morning that God has just brought you here for this moment You've been going through a problem. You've had a problem for a long time, and that problem is there. You face it every morning, and 
Perhaps you've begun to question God about it, but I want to tell you God on this Sunday morning can do something about your long-term problem. Did you hear me? Sometimes we have our baggage and we have our problems, and spiritually we pull them around like a little red wagon. Everywhere we go, we bring that wagon full of problems with you. Do you know what I'm talking about? And when we go to Walmart or when we go to work or when we come to church, we get out of the car and pull that little wagon wherever we go. I want to tell you today, this is the day to get rid of the wagon. This is the day when God can do something about your long time problem. You can walk out of here free. Praise God. You can walk out of here delivered by the great power of Jesus. Hallelujah. My heart goes out to people who have been suffering for a long time. If you are dealing with a disease or an illness or a situation, we, we're going to pray for you today. If you want to be prayed for, I believe on this Sunday morning, Pastor, God can touch people. If you've been suffering for a long time, let's dare to believe God that this is your day when he does something about your long time situation. Jesus specializes. I want to declare it again. Jesus specializes in doing something about long term, long time problems. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. I know there's some people who haven't been blessed like they want to be blessed in a long time. We all go through those dry times, those wilderness moments. If you've been walking through a, a dry spell in your walk with God, and if you haven't felt the touch of the Holy Spirit in, the, in a long time, can I tell you this is your day, this is your moment. Jesus is going to come to you and lay his hand upon your life. Would you just lift up your heart to the Lord right now and let the Holy Spirit come in and be restored, be renewed, feel the presence of God one more time. Let God renew your faith and your soul in the name of Jesus. Oh, I want to speak it again. I declare renewal. I declare spiritual, spiritual renewal for someone in this house today. Oh, I feel the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you've been seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit to be filled with the Spirit for a long time. Don't give up. Keep on praising God. Keep on believing God. I believe God can baptize you in His Spirit this very day. Hallelujah. If you have been dealing with a problem in your family or in your marriage and you thought, okay, this is going to be with me until I die. Don't accept that in the name of Jesus. Don't accept that. That's a lie of the devil. Would you just put your heart into this miracle of Jesus if he can touch a demon-possessed man who had been demon-possessed for a long time? I declare to you he can touch your family problem, your marriage problem. He can help you today. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Lastly, I know sometimes we get kind of used to our bitternesses and our grudges. Have you ever had one of those things? I know sometimes we think a, a good grudge is like a, a first cousin just hanging around. And I've known somebody that think that bitterness is a spiritual gift. But I'm here to tell you this morning they're not. It, don't you think it's time for us to be healed emotionally of those things that we've been bitter of? I've met people in their senior adult years who are bitter about something that happened in high school. Oh, God, would you just help us this morning? I've met people who have been fussing, fussing, fussing over a grudge that happened 20 years ago. I refuse in the name of Jesus. I'm going to confess my wrongdoing, my sin. I'm not going to let bitterness and grudge become a root in my soul that destroy my life with Jesus Christ. Oh, Holy Spirit, just sweep over this congregation today. Praise God. Praise God. What do you do to find God's help in a moment when you've been through something in a long, long time? First of all, we need to just be like this man in the Bible we just need to let Jesus get in our situation. Hallelujah. I love the fact that this demon-possessed man who had lived in a cemetery, he had been used to living in shackles. He had been used to doing wrong. He had been used to living such a, a moral, dark life. 
Jesus came and got into his life. Praise God. The first step is to say, God, would you come right now and step into my long-term, long-time situation? Lord, I'm opening up the door of my heart. I've been dealing with this longer than I can remember, but on this very Sunday morning, Father, in the name of Jesus, I want you to step right into my life. The Bible says that Jesus stepped out of the boat and he went on the land. He wasn't looking for somebody pretty and somebody perfect. He went to a man man who lived a dark life. Jesus, would you just step into our dark situation today? Would you step into what's going on in my life? It'll get better, and then it'll get best, the best life we can have through Jesus. Praise God. Secondly, praise God. Josh, musicians, would you come? I'm winding it down this morning. Not only do we need to let Jesus into our long-time situation, we need to begin to trust God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to trust God. Hallelujah. I have family members that are medical professionals. professionals. I thank God for hospitals. and Aren't we blessed to have all the medical science that we have today? And It's just wonderful. But even though with all of that, I want to say, God, I'm trusting you first to be my healer. I thank God for all the medicines and all the technologies. It's a blessing. But, God, I'm trusting you first. Praise God. Lord, I'm glad that there's a multitude of counselors out there, and there are many wise men and women that can help me, but Lord, I'm trusting you first to come and speak peace to my troubled soul. Praise God. Lord, you're the greatest marriage counselor. You're the greatest emotional counselor there is. Just just come. I'm trusting you first, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. I think we need to begin to just sing and rejoice when we're trying to get out of our long-term situation. There are times when I get up in the morning and I think about one of those songs, praise and worship songs make me glad, and I begin to just sing in my own crude way, Lord, you're my shield, praise God. Lord, on this day, you are my strength, you are my portion, praise God. You're my deliverer. There are days when I just say, just kind of park there. God, you're my deliverer. God, you're my deliverer. Before I pray, I begin to say, God, you're my deliverer. You're my help. You're my very present help in time of need. And all of a sudden, the more I declare that, the more I believe that, my faith is released into the power of Jesus to just come down and do something about it. Lastly, we need to just pray, pray in the mighty mighty name of Jesus. Praise God. Would you speak the name of Jesus with me here today? Jesus. Would you do that one more time? Jesus. I want us to do that about five times. Jesus. 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 One more time. Jesus. He's all powerful and he's here today. Would you stand with me this morning? Praise God. Holy Spirit, you are working in this place today. Miracles are going to happen in this worship service this morning in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Would you just believe God for miracles right now? Could we just close our eyes and say, Lord, let the power of Jesus be released in our lives this morning. Father, let your power be released in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, praise God. If you've been bound by sin and evil for a long time, Jesus will set you free this morning. I want you to come and let these wonderful people of this church pray with you. You can be set free today from a life of evil, a life of sin, a life of wrongdoing. He'll do that for us. Oh, praise God. Praise God. If you're walking through one of life's problems and you've been walking it out for a long time, I want to pray for you this morning. If you need healing for something you've been walking with for a long time, would you step out and come to the altar of the Lord? We want to pray with you and for you today. If you need a refreshing, a new blessing on your soul, He will touch you this morning. Praise God. As the musicians sing, would you just begin to step out and meet me here in this altar of the Lord? Some of our prayer partners, some of the leaders of the church, prayer partners, would you come and just be here at the altar of the Lord?
with me today. We're going to pray. For anyone who comes today, we're going to pray with you and for you. You need his help today. In the name of Jesus, someone is here that will lay hands on you or pray with you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for miracles today. You need a miracle in your life this morning. You need God to do something great. Would you just step out and let us pray with you this morning in the name of Jesus. All over this congregation, we believe for the power of God, the power of the Lord to be released. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen, Lord. Let miracles happen. Miracles happen. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, Lord. Let miracles happen here today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for the power of the Lord. Oh,
praise God. Would you lift up your hands and begin to praise God out loud? Praise God. I want to do one more thing and then pastor is coming. Praise God. Several years ago, I was in a small church in a rural part of southeastern Missouri. We had a great service. Praise God. A great country church. They had more people in church. The, the, the population of that little community was about 130. They had over 200 people in church. And we prayed that day and had a great service. And at the end of that service, I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, Wherever you go, conclude every service by asking God for miracles. And I'm, I've been doing that all these many years. Would you join hands with someone beside of you if you feel comfortable doing so? I feel the Lord in this today. The Holy Spirit is in this church. Oh, praise God. I want you to pray for miracles to happen in the lives of the person on either side of you or behind you. Praise God. You may know that person really well or not well at all. It doesn't matter. Father, all over this congregation, I declare miracles are happening in the name of Jesus. Do what man cannot do. Do what we dare not even think about. Just let a miracle of God come into existence today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person here today, every family, every marriage, every teenager, every adult, I pray in the name of Jesus for the miracle working power of Jesus to be released in this congregation. Praise God. Would you lift up both hands today and just begin to, even if you're not used to doing this, let's just praise God out loud. Lord, we praise you in this church. We praise you in this church, Lord. We praise you, Father. We praise you. We believe the power of Jesus, the miracle-working power of Jesus is at work this morning. Glory to God. Does anyone else want to be prayed for by the laying on of hands, the anointing of oil? I want you to come. The Lord is here today. Praise God. Does anyone else want to be prayed for? I invite you to come. If there's a need, the Lord, I'm not trying to prolong anything. I know God is just touching us this morning. Help us, Lord. Help us. Thank you, young man. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Church, would you just extend your hand this way and begin to pray? God is doing something here this morning, and we thank him for that. I wish about 10 people would begin to shout praise to God in this church this morning. The power of the Lord is here today.
much. Praise God, church. God is doing something in this wonderful congregation today in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I've asked the pastor to check me if I'm not in order, and I mean that. I love this man. I'm not trying to prolong anything. I know you've got plans, but I feel the power of the Lord being released in this congregation. I learned a long time ago, don't be dismissive of these moments if there's a need. And there's nothing wrong with this. If there's anyone else in this great congregation today, you want to be prayed for. You have a need been battling with something a long time and there's a pool of water you can come and jump in this morning stepping out is just simply a step of faith would you come this morning if there's anyone else you want to be prayed for prayed with praise god amen thank you anyone else want to come for prayer this morning i just feel such great faith in this church would you just extend your hand this way Prayer warriors, would you gather around our sister this morning? We're going to dare to believe the
Amen. Amen. We're going to just keep praying down here. I'm going to pray. Just keep praying. I don't know if everybody knows this, everybody remembers. Somewhere around over 17 years ago, Roy had a double lung transplant. The two lungs that are in his body, he didn't, he wasn't born with those. He got those from a man who was in some kind of auto accident or something. And 17 years ago, they 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 took those lungs out of that man as as he was dying. They gave them to Roy. The the um, the longevity of that. Uh, what they're saying that Roy, how long Roy would live, is less than what he has lived already. <clears throat> so we're saying thank you, God. <clears throat> Roy's still in. Roy's still in good health, um, from my understanding. <laughs> He's still in good health. He played guitar for us this morning. He sings for us. Um, so, one, first, we want to just say thank you, God, for what you're doing in Roy's life. And second, I want to just remind everybody, if you see Roy pass you on the highway, just say, God, touch that man. Touch that man. Touch him. Bring healing in his life. Um, because this is, here's what the doctors say. And I don't know if there's anybody out there that knows much about this. You, you can't go forever with somebody else's organs. But this is what I know, that there are times where God says, you know what, I'm just going to do this. And he just does it. And I'm just thankful for what God's doing. And um, what a, it's a, it's a really, it's a massive surgery. It's a massive surgery. I don't know, we, I just don't know, I just don't know that we really understand how big that surgery is. You know, but God knows, and God's been blessing it. So, amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 Dr. Milton, we appreciate you for speaking with us this morning and just sharing with us. We just want to say thank you um, from the bottom of our heart. Amen. God is good. Amen. 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 Praise God. I'm just I'm just thankful for what he's for what he's doing. Amen. I'm going to ask uh, JD if he'll pray over us as we go.